Hello everybody and today I'm going to show you how to get started with modding Oblivion. The simplest and easiest way possible. And what you need to make your life modding Oblivion the easiest as it can be. Alright, so let's get in there. Now before you get ahead of yourselves and begin installing OBS E, it's good practice to launch Oblivion at least once before you begin modding and head into properties and verify integrity of game files to repair any potentially broken files within the game. Well, the first thing you're going to need to start modding Oblivion is Oblivion itself. And if you clicked on the video and you don't have Oblivion, I don't know what you're doing here, you silly goose. I don't know if I can help you at all. Well, after you get Oblivion, the very next thing you're going to need is OBSE, the Oblivion Script Extender. If you go down into the description, I have the download link down there, and just follow my instructions on how to install it properly. So now that you're on the Oblivion Script Extender download page, you're going to simply follow where it says download, and click the link. And now you'll see that it's downloading in the bottom left, or in the top right, depending on which browser you're using. And simply send that fucker to the desktop. And now that you have OBSC installed, you're going to want to get to your game directory where you have Oblivion installed at. And there's two ways you can get there. You can either go to your Steam account, find Oblivion, right click on it, and go to manage and browse local files. Or you can start out with opening your this PC. Go to your hard drive or SSD that you have the game installed on. Go to x86, Steam, Steam apps, common, and then you'll find Oblivion. And it's as easy as that. And now that you have Skyrim's game directory open, you're going to want to open up OBS E. But if you click on it and you find out that you can't open it, you're going to need an extraction program. Either 7-Zip, WinRoar, anything like that. Me personally, I use WinRoar. And if you need WinRoar, uh, I'm going to show you how to install that. Oh, you're still here. Okay. Alright, so now that you're on the WinRoar download page, you're going to either want to download the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version of WinRoar. To find out which version you need, you can go down to your search bar, search up Settings, Go to About, and you'll find it here. It'll say 64-bit uh, operating system or 32-bit operating system. And I'm on Windows 11, so it might be a little different depend uh, switching over between operating systems, but I believe it's, it's about the same. With OBS E open, right alongside the Oblivion game directory, you're going to need the obsc.dll, obsceditor.dll, obsceloader.exe, and the obsc-steamloader.dll. And you could send these straight into the game directory. And as you can see, I already have these, but I'm going to replace them anyways. Next step after installing your script extender is to install your mod organizers, that being Rybash, which is mandatory. You cannot get around not using Rybash at all. After that, Oblivion Mod Manager, which is iffy in usage. There's some mods with the old OMOD file type that Rybash cannot properly install. And lastly, Vortex. I do not use Vortex with modding Oblivion at all. All my mods are manually installed through Rybash because Oblivion being such an old game as it is, uh, almost all of the mods aren't compatible with downloading through Vortex. Now that you're on the Nexus page to download Rybash, the link is down below in the description. You're going to hit Manual Download, hit Slow Download or Fast Download depending if you have a premium account or not, which to download on Nexus you're going to need an account by the way. And once that's downloaded, you're going to run the installer. Next, you're going to install it to your game directory, which should be there by default. Next, Install. You're going to wait for the installer to do its thing. At this point, you should have Oblivion, OBSE, and Rybash all installed. And we're going to move on to OBMM. You can get there by following the link down below. You guys are so good at following directions, I'm so proud of you. You're going to hit manual download. Run it. You're going to see obmmsetup.exe. Run that. Next, it's going to install in your game directory. 
And lastly, for the mod organizers, Vortex, which Vortex is very useless when it comes to Oblivion, but I'll show you how to install it anyways, because there are some mods you can install with Vortex. Although, uh, mixing between Rybash, Vortex, and OBMM could cause some headaches, so I would recommend either sticking to Rybash or using uh, OBMM alongside Rybash. But uh, that's just me. So here's how to install Vortex. You're going to go to the Vortex download page, link below, manual download, and once Vortex downloads, you're going to run the installer. All right, and that's that's it. Vortex ran, and uh, but there's a couple other things you got to do once you install it. When you install Vortex, you're first going to come down to the Games tab, search up Oblivion, and hit Manage. So, now that you have Oblivion managed, uh, you're going to be able to go to your Mods tab, and any mods you install through Vortex will appear here, but you are going to have to log into your account before any mods you download on the website will apply to the Vortex Mod Manager. Alright, we're all done with the mod organizers, moving on to the troubleshooting tools. You don't need both of these, you could either have loot or boss. Personally, I prefer loot. Loot is newer in style and looks cleaner, more aesthetically pleasing. And boss, uh, it works. But, um, these tools will, they will tell you, basically, if you're missing a master. A master is like a missing DLC or a missing mod that another mod were, needs to work or uh, it'll tell you if you're using two plugins that like a HD or an ND version and uh, basically just makes making mod packs a lot easier and they're, they're nice and pretty much 100% necessary anyway I'm done rambling and I'm gonna show you how to install loot following the link below will bring you to loot's github page and clicking on loot.installer.exe will download loot once it's installed, you're going to run the loot installer. You can select any directory you want to install this at. I'm just going to leave it with the default. It's going to run the installation process, and you can launch loot. Finishing up the troubleshooting tools, we're going to now install boss, which, as again, I recommend using loot, uh, just because it's more aesthetically pleasing and uh, much more legible. Boss, if you open it up, it's going to run a command prompt and bring you to an HTML page, and as you can see, it is very hard to read what's going on here. While loot, you open it up, and it brings you up to a real nice, everything's clean text. Yeah, that's the main reason I prefer loot over boss, but if you prefer the old style, uh, I'm gonna show you how to use that anyway. On the boss GitHub page, near the bottom, you're gonna see boss installer.7zip, you're gonna run that, it's going to install, you're going to launch it, you're going to see bossinstaller.exe, click on that. Next, you can install it in any directory, I'm just going to use the default, and now boss is successfully installed. And finally, tests for edit. This is a cleaning tool that cleans your plugins, it removes any unnecessary IDMs, which uh, just makes your game more stable, prevents crashing, and uh, it's, a, it's a nice tool to have, if you're really wanting to get in, getting into making a mod pack for Oblivion. On the test for it at Nexus page, you're going to find manual download, send that fucker to the desktop, and make a special folder for it. You're going to left click on it, right click, show more options, extract here. If uh, you're running Windows 11, you're going to hit show more options, but uh, if you're running any other operating system, you don't have to do that. Test for edits installed, you can run it now. It's going to pop up and here it is this is test for edit in all its glory howdy you guys made it to the end of the video this is part one of a uh, X part series I don't know how many parts I'm going to make this because uh, who knows I might just abandon it all together like I do so many other videos but the software on the left is what I use personally and I completely ignore the software on the right so I hope you made your decisions on what software you use and if this video helped you you're welcome see ya